Welcome, everybody, to the latest live stream um, presented by myself and Matthew Cochran, the two Matthews. Um, we've done a couple of these now, uh, one on Philip Glass and one on Ralph Towner with two of our, our recent videos that we, we produced as a duo. But today we're doing something different. We're focusing on probably one of the most famous guitar duos of all time, featuring two of the most famous classical guitarists of all time, John Williams and Julian Bream. And we are delighted um, to be joined uh, by Hilary Field all the way from Seattle and Brett Williams all the way from New York. So we're just such an international bunch and we're sort of, you know, sort of smattered out at all corners of the globe, which is great. Um, and we've got some lovely clips to share with you uh, this evening of, of, of John and Julian playing. And, you know, as Matt and I sort of form our duo, we are talking a lot about our inspirations and the distance that we have means that, you know, sometimes we have these very intense rehearsal periods where we're both either in Michigan or I think Matt's going to be over here in Scotland um, at the end of January, early February. But in the meantime, to keep that connectivity going, it's great to have such a great community online to sort of share ideas with and discussions. So I'm going to head over, I'm going to hand over uh, to Matthew Cochran to give us a little bit of history about uh, John Williams and Julian Bream, and then we'll sort of take the discussion from there. So welcome, everybody. If anybody's got any questions that's watching on YouTube or on Facebook or on Twitter, you post a question by way of asking, like, a comment. You just make a comment. So there's one on the screen right now. You can just type a question in, in the comment box on YouTube and we will show those comments and we'll address those comments as we go. So as the discussion develops, if you think of something and you want to get that in, just go for it. But anyway, over to you for just now. Well, uh, so I, I would imagine that uh, the Julian and John duo is, is certainly, um, uh, it's the combination of the two most famous guitar players of the vinyl era, um, uh, or maybe the, the nadir of the, the, the vinyl era. And uh, so I thought I'd give a quick rundown of uh, how they met and what their activities were and uh, what kind of records are, are out there. So really the Julian and John story starts uh, in the early 1950s when Len Williams, the teacher and father of John Williams, opens up uh, the Spanish Guitar Center uh, in London. That's in 1952. Um, and uh, already at that point, John Williams uh, is, is a very, very promising and already fairly prominent guitar player in the kind of like child prodigy sense. Uh, Bream is a few years older than, than, than Williams, um, well, about a decade over, older than Williams, and he's already starting to establish himself um, you're hearing him uh, uh, perform on BBC. He's getting uh, little concerts. And the, the kind of growing guitar community that's in existence in, uh, in London at that time and really through, throughout the, the UK, it's starting to bubble up. There are guitar magazines that are you know, showing up uh, at, at this time and little guitar clubs uh, all around uh, the UK. And so at these events, uh, Bream and Williams start to uh, start to meet each other and are presenting little solos here and there, you know, source studies and stuff like that. Um, and uh, to now I'd love for uh, any true historians, I, I consider myself a, 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 a Bream and Williams enthusiast, not so much a historian. Uh, uh, the best uh, information that I could get was uh, that their first performance together as a duo uh, happens in 1968. Uh, this is December 1st, Queen Elizabeth Hall. Um, they're presenting a handful of solos and a few duos that become really a part of the repertoire that they would keep with them for the next decade or so. Um, their time of real productivity, of, of, of real renown, really happens between around 1969, um, when that first recital gets um, uh, broadcast on BBC, uh, through around 1979. I couldn't find any concerts that they did together uh, uh, after 1980, but again, we'd, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear, uh, and maybe maybe Hillary and Brett know, know more than I do here. Um, the three records that uh, we have kind of versions of uh, start with 1971's Together. Um, that's also 
uh, often called Julian and John. Uh, this is a, yeah, the, uh, this is the version that, that I have. Is that is it the same? Is it a repackaged um, or is, is it all the same repertoire that you have there, Matthew? This is a repackage, I'm sure, because I've got, when I was digging this out, when we were thinking about this, I went to my vinyl collection, which you can kind of see a CD collection kind of behind me there. But on the other wall, there's a vinyl collection. And for some reason, I have three copies of Together Again on vinyl, which just shows you some sort of, I think, sickness, I think illness, really. <laughs> To be honest, that's probably enough to get a restraining order if you're George Williams. You know, you'd probably be like, I, I think this guy needs to stay at least 50 meters. <laughs> <laughs> so I was digging through all my vinyl copies, and, and yet there's been, there's been different reproductions, different reprintings. This is the, the sort of double CD. Double CD. Okay. You yeah. know, when it does this. How good does that Beautiful. I mean, I mean, we don't get those moments much anymore, you know? <laughs> no, and in fact... A, 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 a portion of this discussion uh, uh, started because I'm I'm in the process of collecting all of Bream's uh, uh, RCA vinyl, which I do not have. So I'm, I'm I'm very slowly kind of amassing this, and so this is where um, uh, a good portion of this discussion started with Matthew. And I'll say, I I, I have been listening to this uh, record kind of a lot. Um, and, uh, it's got the same double album kind of awesomeness, you know, that is, that oh, is, that's cool. nice. That is, that's that nice. Is pretty sweet. I can't believe how into this we are. It's great. Like, <laughs> you know, what's interesting too, is that when I was looking up the album, when I was looking up the album on Spotify, I'd never seen that purple one that, uh, that you have. I had never yeah, seen that cover shirt. before. Yeah. yeah, I saw the other one that was sort of a muted, uh, and it has a, a, either the RCA logo. That was the one that I remember seeing yeah. that n neither of you have shown me yet. But in that double one, I'm aware of its existence. Is that just so, together and together again? To, well, that's the well, one that I remember. Okay, so so yeah. Julian and John 2 is the version that I have. And uh. I believe... I believe that this is the 1974 edition and then together and together again were renamed. Yeah. But again, I'm not so sure about that, but I believe it's Julian and John and Julian and John two and then live. And then everything else was repackaged many, 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 many times. So yeah. it wasn't originally called together and together again. It was called Julian and John. I believe so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, uh, basically it, it ends up being kind of like the, the, the Robert Johnson thing where it's like, there's this much music, that's as much as you get. And then yeah. like, they just the, continue the, to repackage yeah, the, it the, for the decades. Owners of the material yeah. can, um, <laughs> yeah. well, anyway, so we have three records, uh, basically spanning 1971 through 1978. Um, and, uh, they really, they play together between 1968 and roughly 19. 79 um they remain super supportive of each other and friendly uh but uh but definitely around uh, around the 80s they you know decided that uh, they were going to focus mostly on their uh solo careers and i have so many questions as to why um and uh, uh but again they're 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 really uh you know they're, they're, they they remain super supportive of each other and there's this awesome uh appearance uh, uh, on Julian Bream's episode of This Is Your Life, John Williams kind of shows up and sort of surprises Bream. There's footage on on YouTube, and it's and it's utterly delightful. It's it's a it's fantastic. So that's basically uh, the you know they had about a, a, a decade together. And if you're a fan of of the classical guitar, you very likely know uh, uh, quite a bit uh, about uh, Julian Bream. And John Williams, and of course, we've invited uh, Hillary and Brett on, uh, mostly because you're fantastic guitar players who have interesting things to say. Um, I, I didn't actually field whether or not you're into this this, this duo or not, um, and uh, uh, that, that yeah. certainly isn't a a, a a price for being involved in the conversation. Well, so, it's yeah, it's. Us. it's 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 lovely to be asked, and um, Julian Bream and John Williams are two of my my favorite guitarists ever. Um, and you're saying like, why did they stop around '79? I I think in the 1980s. I'm not sure, but I think did John Williams kind of 
veer over to like his his own popular rock kind of things for a while like he had his own band yeah sky yeah was so happy. i think i think he might have like moved out of classical for a little bit um he definitely got very yeah. um, sort of experimental but not not with like let's say classical contemporary music in the way you know Bream no. was, was doing yeah this. he had kind of like a jazz or rock band yeah he had a rock yeah. band guy um he was in like anti ilamani for a second and he was yeah. just doing all sorts yeah. of stuff like that yeah, yeah. so so maybe I think Jerry, like he was interested in exploring different genres too. So he was like, you know, not wanting to be sort of pigeonholed as, as not not saying Bream wanted to be pigeonholed, but I think Williams definitely didn't want to be just thought of as just a classical guitar player. Yeah. Know. And he, he played with Pete Townsend. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I know um, my, my husband uh, played me that, uh, that music when we first met. Because I didn't know that. Like he's like, "Oh, you play classical oh. guitar? You got to hear this thing." <laughs> and it was him it, playing like a duos with uh, with Pete Townsend. Yeah. Oh, it, it is true that he says that. Like he's, Policeman's Ball or something like that. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. He says that in the Seville concert. I remember that. I haven't watched that for many years, but oh, I do yeah. remember it stuck with me that he said he said a guitarist always introduces themselves as a guitarist. They don't say I'm a classical guitarist. Yeah, that's, that's John right. Williams. That's that's out of his mouth. Ah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, he definitely w was sort of rebelling, at least partially against the idea that um, oh, we're okay. stuck in a genre or we're stuck as soloists. And um, you know, I think it's I right. think you're onto something, Hillary. I think you absolutely are. It, it speaks to the the sort of bravery of John Williams in a way, because what he's doing there is he's moving away from the establishment. Like, you know, it's it, definitely it, it, kind of a bit easier yeah. for Bream like say from an intellectual art music perspective to say I'm going to go and commission uh, Peter Maxwell Davis or I'm going to work with Hedza or I'm going to you know get these bagatelles by Walton off the ground and all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff to go and put on like a, a you know a flower power shirt get your Stratocaster and jump into a rock band with Herbie Flowers playing bass you know you're gonna you're gonna take some flack from your sort of narrower niche sort of fans I mean I uh, I sort of applaud Williams for that you know how there's I don't often, I have a feeling he didn't really, that doesn't really matter to him, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He didn't care. You know, but I think a lot He's John of Williams, so. Yeah, yeah. But at the time, though, at the time, I think his fans did care because there were almost two camps of people, like Bream fans. And right, Williams. his fans probably cared. I'm just saying I don't think yeah. he cared. No, no. <laughs> no. Totally yeah. Cared. Yeah. But well, actually, that that and that takes us to an interesting um, uh, a point that 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 Bream ad addressed a couple of times, and I'm not sure if, if Williams did. Um, uh, Matthew, you said that that there was sort of a Bream camp and a Williams camp, yeah. and uh, and 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 Bream said, and I can't remember where what my source is, but uh, he said, well, you know, be, we were aware of that. Uh, in the 60s, we were aware that there was sort of like the people who listened to Bream, the people who listened to Williams, and we thought that that was fairly um, uh, destructive and uh, one way to, uh, uh, you know, yeah. kind of get rid of the problems. So, so anyway, I, I think that's I think that's kind of cool because I think there still is a little bit of a Bream camp yeah. and a Williams camp. I, I I I would say for me, I you know, I've listened to a lot more Julian Bream. Then I have John Williams, but I think of both of them as giant trailblazers. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I, anyway, how how did you well, come to uh, listen to the to the groups? Well, I was going to I was going to jump in if you don't mind me jumping in because I was going to let us hear the horse's mouth because I've got a little clip that I want to share with everybody okay. of John and, and and Julian talking about it. Um, and I think it's dug up. It's it's available on YouTube. You can see it, the, the whole thing. It's a BBC sort of documentary, but it talks about these differences. And it might be just nice to hear this and then sort of push on into sort of fearing how Hillary and Brett both sort of, you know, found that this music. So let's just try this and just see, see, see if it provokes any ideas. I think it was my idea, but it may have been John's. I certainly wanted us to play some duets because 
Over a number of years, there were two camps. There was the Williams camp and the Breams camp, you see. It was rather sort of, well, very pleasant, really. And I thought the best thing John and I could do were to play duets. Well, that would disperse them. And it duly did. <laughs> With Julian, it was great because we're very, we're very different and we, we mutually respect that. It's awesome. <laughs> you hear them play and it's just so alive. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the fact that they're so different, it sort of it gives this synergy, you know, like because they have those different styles, it makes it even more powerful than if they were like exactly the same. And and bef before we did this, um, you know, what well, our panel today, I, was, um, I looked on YouTube for a couple of clips as well and I noticed... Um, for some of them, they had totally different guitars too. Like today, guitar yeah. duos will have like twin guitars, like made for them matching. And um, everything will be like so, so similar, like they're one, which is beautiful. Yeah. But here it's like we're watching clips from, you know, decades ago and they have totally different guitars, totally different tops, different sounds. Um, they have their own personalities that are so different, musical personalities, you know. Um, and they're putting them together. And I think that's part of the excitement is, you know, the, the, the opposing parts. Yeah, the guitars is a is a big deal. And especially not in that clip so much, but there are clips where, you know, well, first of all, one of the things I noticed about that clip was that they were sitting on, you had Bream on the, on the, on the uh, stage left and you had Williams on stage right. The other clips were always... I don't know. I mean, I, oh, I, yeah, it seems like right. they were able to switch around. And that's yeah. not something you see in duos. Duos are usually one person is really comfortable uh, mm -hmm. with the fretboard. And I was always that person when I was in a duo. I loved seeing Giacomo mm -hmm. and, and being oh, able to right. look at you my left duo. hand. Yeah. And he was he yeah. was a superior guitarist, I think, uh, technically speaking. So he was more comfortable. And I was I was able to follow him more. By having my my so I always kind of consider that important. Yeah, is where where they're sitting with the duo. But what you say right, about the visual, guitars? Yeah, yeah, you got one one guy is on a spruce and one guy's on a cedar, and one guy's mm -hmm. you know making these short uh you know very these short articulations, you know on a brighter spruce, and the other guy is, is using more sort of a, a uniform color that John Williams sort of uniformity to his playing. It's it's really mm -hmm. it's outstanding that they were even playing together at all. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. The fact that it works is is you wonder how much they had to do behind the scenes in rehearsal to yeah. sort of control that, you know, because, um, I mean, it's really interesting. There's a, there's a comment just come in, just as you were t talking there, Brett, about specifically guitars. Um, and it's from Philip, uh, Philip Tadman, who is actually um, a patron of the Gallery of Guitars. So hello, Philip. Um, and he's got a great question. The sound on each, or not question, a comment, really. The sound on each of those albums was marvellous, but also very different, just right. what Brett's sort of been mm -hmm. describing. I believe the guitars were Hauser, Hernandez, and then Romanilos and Fleta, and then finally Boucher and Fleta. And what, yeah. that, what that speaks to me of so much is, I don't know if you remember this album, anybody, but it was an album, and I have it called Echoes of Spain. Mm -hmm. And it's John Williams. It's a solo album, and it's on his Fleta. It's before he went into the sort of Greg Smallman guitar um, sort of exploration. And it's just for me, it's like an incredible album that I sort of grew up with. The sound was just so Spanish and so great. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, like, if there, there, there's more for me, there's more experimentation than they did when they were in their solo classical guitar world. Of eventually, it went Smallman, and it was quite Hauser. And then you know, Bream had these sort of a lot of the English guitar makers came into to sort of his his world a bit later on in his career too. But th th they're going away from just the traditional instruments that they played, and they're trying these combinations. They're even choosing the guitars maybe to help with yeah. the idea of presenting the sound. Yeah, it's funny to me because the um, uh, I think I think. The repertoire, which obviously we'll, we'll want to talk about uh, too, the the repertoire actually at this point sounds a little bit conservative, um, and 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 yes. maybe a, a, a little bit staid. Um, 
Mm. Whereas I think there were so many other aspects of the duo that were really forward thinking. And to a certain extent, I think they decided to um, uh, turn a bug into a feature. I think when it comes to their uh, lack of uniformity in their, mm -hmm. uh, in their sound. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I definitely listened to them knowing we all do, I think, uh, uh, listen to them knowing, okay, that's John. That's Julian. Yeah. Like very clearly, that's you know that that's what's happening. Of course, I don't, I, I very seriously doubt um, that I could do that with any of the great um, mm -hmm. uh, duos that are uh, uh, functioning today. Well, mm -hmm. probably I, I would imagine. Is that true for you guys? <laughs> uh, no, I, I I agree with you. <laughs> I agree too. Yeah. Well, you made that yeah, point, yeah. Hillary. Like a, a, a lot of the time now, Hillary's Hillary's duos try to like merge they, they deliberately try to yeah. be very consistent in terms of sound production they're, they're not celebrating the differences they're actually doing the opposite you know right i like yeah. that what you said celebrating the differences i think that that's what comes through with the bream and williams duo they're celebrating the differences and making them into something larger together and the dynamic you know the the, the excitement of that I'm going to say something probably a little bit. I hope it's not controversial, but like I think Bream had a harder time with that than Williams, because I've been watching, I've been you know sort of binge watching YouTube since we decided to do this and looking at all these the recordings and there's there's a couple of live gigs, and watching Bream like how hard he's working to sort of tame the beast, you know, like because he's so expressive, like and he he takes so many risks and he does so many crazy things at times like you know sometimes a student comes to me and they say like oh I want to play like Julian Bream and I'm like well that's a completely pointless idea I'm sorry you might want to be as inspired as Bream is <laughs> the music that you play but don't don't try and do what he does to make these things work because it's like unorthodox and just crazy and then you look over at Williams and he's like I've got this you know and I'm my, my well, time is so yeah isn't that their technique though that I mean when you see when you see each of them play you know, William's so cool and Bream is, is so passionate and, you know. I think that that's sort of, like he, yeah. No, that's <laughs> sort of, I, uh, that's sort of kind of, I mean, that's what we keep coming back to is that these yeah. guys were so different. You know, John Williams most clearly represents the guitarist who lets the music play itself, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and I think sometimes he's unfairly and I, you know, I, I stress unfairly characterized as, you know, the less expressive of the two. Some people might say, but, you know, he seems to sort of have that opinion of he seems just more of an ethereal presence than Julian yeah. Green. You know, he's it, he talks about again, I keep I keep on going to the Seville concert because it was so formative for me that that sort of that uh, VHS that you would buy or mm -hmm. at least I did. And, you know, he talks about it, how he's not he's not an Australian. He's not an Englishman. He's a Londoner. That's what he says. And he doesn't even like London because of the you know, and these are his words because of the bullshit. He says in London. So this is this is John Williams. He does. He's sort of this, you know, he just he runs with the music. And Julie Bream is exactly the opposite. You know, he's like a Tolkien-esque <laughs> you know, <laughs> proud Englishman, you know, <laughs> South London, just this man of the earth. He's looking down everything about them. It's almost like it, the, the, when, the way that they appear when they yeah. play is almost they're so different. It's, it's almost grotesque. That's such different posture. <laughs> Yeah, different it's really posture, interesting. Yeah. So I think just the way they present themselves to the world is completely different too. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that age difference too, an eight year age difference. One's born in 1933, the other's born in 1941. That age, age doesn't always mean it's something, but I think eight years is, is long enough, especially in the guitar world, especially at that time where we're still developing our, our uniform technique. We're still doing it today. You can only imagine what it was like in 1972. Yeah. You know, where there's, you know, colleges, there's, it's over here, you know, it hadn't been in colleges for more than 30 years at that point. So these things are all happening. And at that point, there was, obviously, you can see there's a difference technically between the two. Definitely. Um, so there's them having to reconcile all that stuff. They must have loved each other and, and really wanted to make this happen in yeah. a real deep and profound way, because yeah. it, it seems like it was a struggle. 
You know, there was a lot that they had to go against to get these pieces down. Well, you know, it's Carulli and stuff like that, which is probably why I didn't listen to it too much when I was a kid. I was like, oh, I, you know, you're getting hit over the head with Soar and Carulli. The last thing I need to do is, is listen to an album. <laughs> you know, Soar and Carulli. And I came back, I came back to it later and I, I ended up, you know, really falling in love with it. And so it was... On those recordings, though, there's, I think, you know, it's interesting, like, Matthew, you said, like, um, the repertoire could be looked at as a little bit sort of safe, you know, and a little mm -hmm. bit traditional. Yeah, I think within a classical music world, but remember, like, no one in the classical music world had really heard of Karuli, like, you know, and then guitarists brought right. that into, like, yeah. you know, think about the places they're playing, wow. like, more of all these kind of places, and suddenly you've got, like, a duo or a sonata by Karuli or Soar, and then they did all those arrangements of Debussy and Foray and Ravel, and, yeah. you know, it, it was, like, ways of hearing classical music that would normally be piano trio, string quartet, you know, solo piano concerts. And then here are these two guys sitting with guitars and they're just as comfortable, you know, sitting in a BBC studio prime time on a, on a Thursday or a Friday night as part of a comedian show or part of a sort of cultural review show. And then they're off doing these classical gigs. They were sort of like infiltrating all these different, parts of, of of the sort of cultural zeitgeist certainly in the bbc and in the uk and i think um it was it, some of the repertoire yeah for us i think now certainly you look back on it and you think okay if i'm in a duo that's not the first thing i would go to i mean we've not we've not like matthew and i we haven't gone let's get that Karuli serenade or that like, <laughs> <laughs> but at, at, at the time were they were those pieces new at the time like in 72 like maybe not a lot of people had heard um those yeah. those guitar duos and now we hear them a lot because people learn them from the Julian yeah. and John. Yeah, that's a, that's so maybe an excellent they were point. new then. Yeah, and that's that's an excellent point. And it's and it's easy for me uh to to kind of forget that, you know, I mean the, these are guys that really set the standard um at least that that I'm aware of. And so they are the standard repertoire. Right, Just because they play right. because they set you know? standard. Yeah. They're playing right. standards. It, it, they set yeah, exactly. the standards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think where they, yeah. they got through as well was with like all these amazing transcriptions of uh, not not that they did like some of Pujol, but there was also these ideas of Albanus and Granados, the, the Spanish dances, the, the music that pianists like you know um, Alisa de la Roja or Marta Agaric might be playing, but actually your standard classical piano concert probably doesn't have that repertoire in it. And suddenly you were hearing John Williams and Julian Bream playing this stuff and bringing it to life, you know, and it's not piano music anymore. It's, it's, it's two guitar music and it's, it's like chamber music. Um, it, it's a different thing, you know? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. I also I really, question. well, I'm sorry, please go ahead. No, but I just have a question for you two because you two have a similar relationship. You're both, you know, you're both mid, career late mid late career you know whatever like in a comfortable place yeah, well. um and you guys have, you guys have come together in the same in the same way i don't think that this can happen again i don't think that we are going to have another duo that's going to capture the public's imagination i just don't think that's the way we yeah. function as a society anymore that's what makes this so special is that and, yeah is that these are two people that were on especially in in britain and the bbc had they were on in people's homes you know, Julian Breen was a part of people's life. He was on like, I looked up something on YouTube and they, I, I watched uh, This Is Your Life with Julian Breen. Like he was a public yeah. figure. Yeah. And yeah. to have those two come together yeah. um, is, is pretty unique. It's just, because I, I, we don't, we, I was listening to another podcast uh, last week and they were talking about how they were comparing 1922 mm -hmm. to 2022. And they were saying one of the big differences is that the, is the artist is great man is not really something that we do culturally. And we don't have a Stravinsky or a, or a James Joyce. And even, you know, in subsequent uh, generations, there wasn't a Bar Waco, David Russell duo. So it's, it's, it's a really sort of unique situation. Um, and I don't know if we'll ever see it again. Yeah. I'm sure that you guys will capture it, though. You, Matthew and Matthew, <laughs> you guys, you guys got this. Well, well I, 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 yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I think a lot of it has to do with the times that in 19, in the 1960s, 50s, 60s, um, there were not that many um, guitarists doing doing this. So if there's like John Williams, right, Julian Bream, and they are famous because they are the ones that we know. And so 
they would get together because it's just really the two of them. I mean, there were other guitars, but like in terms of the, the fame and the notoriety. Um, but now that's never going to happen again because there's just so, so many. Um, you know, if we put all of the, we're not going to find like the two top guitars and those are the yeah. only ones, right? There's yeah. just so many. So I think no matter what, it's not going to have that same impact. Um, well, except for Matthew and, and Matthew. Could, yeah. Matthew and Matthew well, got it. No, go ahead. Well, I'm I was going to say <laughs> exactly that. It's like there could be there could be a duo who have you know that same musicality and technique and charisma and magic, but it's 2023, and um, oh, it is. And That's right. Just there's so many. There's so many <laughs> others. You know, it's it's uh, the, but to, to the field is is just so so big. Yeah, the field is big. Yeah. To, to to speak to that point of like yeah, no pressure. We we will take on. <laughs> Um, I, I don't think either Matthew is that deluded, um, but we're going to have a lot of fun. That's the main thing. Yes, yes. And I think that's probably what Bream and Williams went into it with. They were like, okay, we've got careers. It's not like we're, it's not like we're just at school or at college or academy and we're classmates and we're just doing this all the time. Let's have a duo, you know, let, let's form a duo and, and that'll be our thing because we're not going to be soloists or something yeah. like that. You know, and I, can, I yeah. I would say that, like, the mid career was such a beautifully put um, uh, comment there, Brett. That was just. Uh, <laughs> it was complimentary and hurtful all at the same time. What should before. I say? Late career, early career? I didn't know. I, I said it, and then I was like, what do you I say, say next? You career, you say. Well, I also, I also will say that I really like Matthew's playing, but the other Matthew, I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant. I, I say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I've been wanting to say that for a long time. Uh, <laughs> but I think, like, yeah, I wrote that two days ago. <laughs> okay. Wait, go, go ahead, go ahead. You know, that's what I just, I just think, like, you know, when you're already have done something and sort of learned to play the guitar and done lots of concerts, you, you, you do a duo for different reasons and, and, and you come to it from different, different perspectives. And I think that's, you can sort of hear that, I think, already, even in the short time we've been working together because we have, you know, done a lot of stuff so we're just waiting to see what this is going to give us you know it's not like we're not really looking for it to deliver a certain thing right now we're actually just enjoying making music so it's it's Excellent. that's yeah. yeah I was also thinking that um like back then like maybe they also just got a little lonely on their tours you know just being a soloist and then oh here's this other great guitarist and I'm doing this tour and he's doing this tour and so let's do it together um mm -hmm. possibly yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, w I wonder about that, too. I mean, Breen, you know, with the with the Julian Breen consort, he also had a duo that he that he, I think, toured throughout the UK. Oh, uh, he worked with singers, uh, uh, right? Is yeah. it Malcolm, yeah. the, the harpsichordist? Um, George Malcolm. Thank you, uh -huh. George Ma Malcolm. And of course, you know, Breen really starts his career uh, with Peter Pears. Um, yeah. So I mean, he he is he he does seem to seek out throughout his career these partnerships, yeah, um, and they last for a very long time. I mean, you know, for for a person whose job is to be on the road, you know, good grief, that guy played, yeah, you know, fifty sixty concerts a year uh, uh, in his sixties. Um, uh, so uh, it's amazing the kind of relationships I think that 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 Bream could. Um, uh, maintain, you know, throughout uh, throughout his entire career. Amazing, really. That must be exhausting as well, because uh, you know you're having to work with like Peter Pears is a very different type of personality, character, musician to George Malcolm, as is John William. You know, you're you're having a lot. There's a lot of skill there. There's a lot of people reading skill and compromise and chamber skill. It's uh, yeah. it's, it brings a force of nature when it comes to this. I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, really I'm looking at Eleanor's uh, question here with 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 a little bit of uh, trepidation. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Are tell you, you what I like. Play anything? Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I find the I personally find the most compelling um, uh, from these from these records, and probably it's because of the performance more than anything. But I actually think the Telemon. Um, is is a really interesting piece. The, the all the stuff that they did some uh, John Johnson, some William Laws, like the things that were sort of in the lute repertoire um, that yeah. that they adapted, that Williams and Bream adapted. A, a lot of other people have have actually done this too. Uh, although I don't think any of them, I wouldn't call any of them like standard repertoire for mm. uh, for, for two guitars. But I personally find that the most fun to listen to. 
Um, and, uh, and I haven't looked at any scores, but I, I, I think that if, if, um, if we were ever to have a conversation about, I think I would be more compelled by that end of the repertoire rather than the, the, the Spanish, um, the Spanish music that, you know, I think a lot of people have really cut their teeth on and, and sound amazing. And I can think of, you know, uh, uh, 12 recordings of, of Faya, like right off the top of my head that yeah. I just think are really magical, you know? Yeah. 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 I, I'm kind of with you there. I think, um, I think it's a good time to show them playing a little bit more. So I've got more clips. Absolutely. That you hear the clips, but okay. to that point about, it might not be the repertoire, but it might be, the way they play and the way that they like Hillary sort of came out as well. They're very different. So why not explore that? And I think like we have a lot of similar taste in music, Matthew, and we sort of often get to the same kind of place, I think in terms of decision-making process, but also we're different in the way we address the string and in the way we, we, we sit and all these kind of things. So I think like when I watched them play this last couple of days, I was like, man, the, some of the stuff they do is just insane. Like the communication that they have, like, the non this non-verbal communication which musicians we all know goes on all the time but people don't know that they just watch music they don't know that like you're picking up on a subtle sort of like classical sniff <laughs> there we go we're started do you know what i mean or like a little, the, all these little body language things that come so i'm going to play this little clip of them playing some of that spanish stuff some albaneth um but just so we can sort of um enjoy how they play together which is just magic you know Yes, yeah, gorgeous. Beautiful. Stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know if anybody's if you're if you're with me there, but like, you hear that and it's it's really quite special. And you know that it wasn't like they didn't do it like that again and again and again. It feels like it's really it's really live. It's really like yeah. creating. Yeah. yeah, they're responding and reacting to each other. Yeah, yeah, that's Just, the best. It, yeah. Yeah. it takes a lot of rehearsal. And it takes a lot of decisions. And one of the decisions that they make, you know, one of the things that I don't see duos do all the time is is, is the role. And then mm. they have to decide what note they're going to come together on. And you saw that right there is that they do, you know, Williams does this, Breen does this role, or I don't know who does what, but one of them does. And then they have to decide. You have to sit down, stop what you're doing, and then make a decision about when you guys are coming back in together. In situations like that, it does come down to sort of minutiae. And it's 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 yeah. really an interesting exercise. Being a duo is is just the coolest in so many ways because it's it's really hard because you have to like schedule together, you have to make uh, repertoire decisions together. It's the hardest and the easiest position for a guitarist to be in, I think. But the easy part really outweighs it. One of the best things that I you know I just kind of wanted to talk about this at some point with you two. Now that you guys are you know on this journey together is how beautiful it can be to just play a melody. I talked about that when I interviewed Solo Duo. And, <laughs> and it was uh, it, 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 the idea that you just get to play a melody as a guitarist and just be It's expressive. so freeing, right? Yeah. 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 And, be, and just be able to just play a melody and not have to worry about so anything true. else. But just forming that melody, it almost makes you feel like what all the other instruments must feel. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that freedom, right? Without having yeah, to worry about yeah. being responsible for every single voice every, all the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can see that. Beautiful. It's mm. a beautiful thing, duos. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a question for Matthew and Matthew. So I'm wondering, um, are you two playing matching guitars or what guitars are you are you playing together? Um, not even close. Not even close. Um, and and in fact, uh, that, I mean, uh, I think a lot of the things that you're, 
that we are discussing when it comes to Bream and Williams and say the other many, I think, you know, masterful duos that are currently in existence. Um, we're kind of wrestling with, I think, some of these topics, and I don't, I don't, I don't see an end to uh, uh, to, to to the conversation or to to the um, uh, to to these questions. So it's good that they're fun questions. Which is, you know, where do we match? When do we need to match? When does our, you know, is it important um, uh, that uh, th that we have kind of a indistinguishable sound or that that, that there are uh, uh, sort of defining characteristics of, of, of both of our sounds. Um, I, it, I I don't know that that I've um, really I'm not really sure I, I, I need I need an answer for those uh, uh, questions on a on a grand scale. Um, mm -hmm. at, at least with, with this particular partnership. Um, mm -hmm. I also really like hearing other duos who've wrestled with these uh, questions. I think, you know, Presti LaGoya had their own kind of questions that they had to ask and, and the uh, Assad brothers figured these things out. I don't know if they ever talked about it, but, but, but they certainly figured these things out. Um, and, uh, and I find that utterly fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Drew's uh, uh, comment. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Presti Lagoya, I think, would be another fantastic conversation for us to definitely uh, have. Yeah, I think that's one of the first things that came to mind when I started listening to this stuff again was Presti Lagoya. Yeah, me too. And yeah. we don't have enough. We don't have enough interviews. Right. We don't have enough insight into that. I think. I think it's really important. You know, it's funny that that seems to have come into everyone's head. You know, when when because yeah. I think. What we've also maybe forced ourselves to do by thinking, oh, this is going to happen, we're going to have this chat, is that you take your mindset out of what it's like to be a guitarist in 2023, as we're now in, and you do go back, and there's some nostalgia there at first, and you think, oh, that recording sounds amazing, and it's like, it's so bright and it's so fresh, but also it's like, it's a very different way of recording guitar, so there's more nail noise, it's not as super clean, you know, so you sort of have to sift through things that like, are a bit jarring and we haven't heard them for the last 10, 15 years so much. And then you sort of hear this other musicianship coming out that, that's so strong. Like right now, you, you said something, Hilary, which was great. It was like, that. I think that the, the, the field is so broad now and there's so many people now doing the same sort of thing. So it's, it's finding the, the musical partnerships and the creativity that that naturally just happened with an Ida Presti and, and Alexandra Lagoya or, Bremen Williams, and then of course the Assad brothers have this telepathic thing, mm -hmm. you know, and this sort of this this, this untouchable uh, communication almost. I don't think anybody can be quite as tight as as they were. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think we will probably feature some of these other duos and talk about these th these ways of playing. But they're all all of these people that we've mentioned are like titans. They're incredible musicians, and they were great ensembles, um, and they had something to really say. And it's. Uh, for me, that's that's the most interesting thing that hits you after the nostalgia and the sort of, oh, it's different and it's 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. There's just that core musicianship is just, it's they're approaching it from a, for, a, for a different reason that, than I think sometimes we see in the sort of more modern modern musical world at times, you know? Um, and I think we'll, we'll have to work to sort of do that. There's an amazing question, right, come in. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's following on kind of a bit from Hillary there. Uh -huh. uh, um, and also the nature of Bremen Williams, and I don't know the answer to this yet because we haven't we haven't really had a circumstance in which I've been like I want to do it this way, or Matthew's been like it has to go this way, or something like that. We haven't had that conflict yet, you know, in a rehearsal or anything like that. And I'm not; it hasn't all been perfect, but like it's not. Um, it's I, I think that's going to be fascinating when that happens you know um, yeah same and i and i think what i think what's different about when when we hear a duo particularly you know i was thinking about this with other like instruments and and is there a you know um i, I can't really think of of a famous duo of cellists you know so um mm -hmm. I, th I think this might be slightly unique uh, to the guitar. I'm sure I'll think of something an hour later that, you know, after, after we're done, that, that's different. But I, what I kind of like to hear with guitar duos, one of, the, one of the things that I find really fascinating with every guitar duo um, 
is how they solve these problems. Every musician has idiosyncrasies, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's time or you know sounds or 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 how you're going to communicate, how you're going to just uh, you know bring a phrase out, um, or maybe even more sort of inside baseball stuff like. How do you approach arpeggios or, um, uh, you know, will you keep your uh, melodic material on one string or, you know, two or whatever? Um, I like to I, f I feel like that's really on display with two guitars, um, maybe a little bit more so than it would be in, say, a guitar quartet, because I played in a guitar quartet for, for, for close to 10 years. And I feel like um, we could have changes in personnel and the music basically sort of stayed where it was whereas i think with a duo two people playing together is it's still extremely exposed and you really get the sense of each person's uh, uh personality and I, I find that really fascinating um whether i'm i'm actually playing in the duo at the time or um uh or 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 whether i'm a listener and it's just it's just so on display when it comes to bream and williams i mean it's it's just like yeah. right right there uh to such a degree that both of them uh addressed it kind of all the time like whenever they were asked about uh their 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 duo with the other person the thing i think that they lead with is well we're very different and therefore <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. um yeah. and i just think that's uh, that's utterly charming and totally fascinating yes there's, a, there's a, someone made a joke. I don't, I, I'm probably somebody. That, I'm probably attributing this to the wrong person, but it was at a guitar festival, and it was about Williams and Bream, and it was like, do you remember the albums together, together again, and then the one they didn't release, which was together at last. You see them play live; they do miss something. You know what I mean? uh. <laughs> they do like. Uh, that sounds like a joke one of them would make. I, really? like. <laughs> I could hear Julian Bream making that joke. He's just a little bit behind Williams or something. <laughs> yeah. Something goes wrong and like they leave it in. Do you know what I mean? They don't like yeah. it doesn't get brushed out, you know? Which yeah. I, I, I love that. I think that's 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 the human part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the human element is what makes it so attractive, right? With this. Yeah. I mean it it just the fact that they're they're playing, you know. You're, there, there's an interactiveness to uh, to sort of um, that level of preparation that you don't get if you get the husband wife duo all the time, or the or the brothers playing together. Uh, those are obviously just like those are machines, you know. Uh, and it doesn't mean that they don't take work. I, you know, I know one of my favorite duos is um, is Michael Andriaccio and and uh, Joanne. Oh my goodness. No, Joanne Andriachi. Anyway, I'm getting their, <laughs> I'm getting their names mixed up. But they are one of my favorite duos. I'll remember their. Mm -hmm. Hello, but it's Michael and Joanne, and um, you can just tell the, the amount of work and time that goes into that, and it's so beautiful in a different way than yes. this is. Uh, yes. Because yeah, the hum the humanity in it is is something that you don't always get with those other um, uh, career duos let's call them where yeah. that's sort of, that's the, that's the home base. And then they sort of do their own things from there. Maybe over in New York, we have Brazil guitar duo. That's very much that way yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. where they both do their own thing. And then they come together every couple of years and, and do something special. So like projects, I don't know. It's yeah. a completely different, different, different thing than what you two are doing. I think it's so interesting that you guys reached out for this because when I saw you guys on Instagram doing what you were doing and I was like, Oh, this is really exciting. And then to kind of get invited to this, I was like, oh, oh, that's what this reminds me of. That's, yeah. You know, so I can yeah. see why you guys wanted to sort of talk about this. It must have been very much in, you know, the forefront of, I mean, was it? Was it in the forefront of your minds when you sort of decided that this would be a path you wanted to go down? Well, this, that's, that's an amazing question because it was in, the, in our minds to do it for so long. We'd been talking about it for about 10 years, I'd say, at least meeting up at the <laughs> festivals meeting up in germany when when matthew was over with the quartet and things like that and if i was on tour in the state we met we met up and we were like we should do a duo we've got the same first name it would make perfect sense you know um and also <laughs> when you just like have a bit of a you have a you have a sort of good laugh with someone every single time you meet them and you always pick up pretty much where you left off that was basically i think and unless matthew's like no i totally disagree you can't stand like you no, know no, i completely agree well, yeah. you know and uh, i think I think then when we sort of thought, well, if we're going to play together, let's not make it 
like just the textbook sort of thing when two people get mm -hmm. together. I mean, like you, you mentioned there, Brett, earlier about you don't know if uh, Barweco and Russell ever played together, but uh, David and Manuel did play together in a duo. And there is a <laughs> I found it years ago on YouTube, and it's a full recording, it's a full concert. I think it's somewhere in the US. Wow. And I've never, wow. I, mean, I, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> it's one of those rabbit holes where I've even sometimes gone, did I imagine that? Was I, <laughs> and just going on YouTube and I, I imagine I saw David and, and, and Manuel playing, but there is a concert. So they must have tried wow. it at some point. But I think like uh, even our approach, we've been talking about like, you know, no boundaries with genres. So, you know, there'll be film music, there'll be music that goes towards much more jazz, you know, like Chick Korea, and we did some Ralph Taylor already. And then, but we're also working on a Bach concerto, but we're not just going to play it exactly the same way as you would if you just approached it as, as, as sort of a st standard guitar duo. We're going to look for the creative things to push us to to reimagine things and 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 make a sound together that, that's different you know mm -hmm. um, so I think I mean I'm speaking for Matthew a bit there so sorry you should you should come in uh, keep going <laughs> I, I I'll let you know when I disagree <laughs> <laughs> well this is sorry, funny this, 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 this comment's amazing from Philip I think I like this yeah I often think Beeman Williams brought that comment the yeah together. and and the always greater yeah. yeah and that's that's what's that's yeah. what I think is is amazing Yes. Um, I've got another clip. I'm going to have to show another clip. I'm too excited about these clips. <laughs> um, but I think, we'll, I think we'll see exactly what, what Philip's sort of saying in this one, for sure, you know. But I've already played it, so definitely not. So we're gonna, we're gonna play another one. See, I got too excited there, you see. Um, this is a live concert. There's something hilarious that, that strikes me there is that um, Bream, Williams gets his hand to the page turn way earlier than Bream, and then he almost waits, and then he's like, no. <laughs> and he has to go for it. <laughs> love, it, love it. And then Bream's page turn is just that. It's just, it's just amazing. You know? um, but like, I picked that clip because it's all over the place. Like They're doing so many different tempo changes. There's so much rebattle going on. You've got the pizzicato section. And, I mean, it's like... It, but it's all it, for me. It just at one point it just sounds like one big guitar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's really that's really strange. Yeah, because they almost yeah. never do. You know, yeah. it, it almost yeah. always sounds like 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 two very very separate uh, voices. But but every once in a while you kind of forget you're listening um, uh, uh, to to a duo. But yeah, it's weird because you know I think of Bream. A lot of the times, at least as a live player, is very similar to a jazz guitar player, um, uh, where he's and, making like yeah. uh, split second decisions that you know maybe they were worked out, maybe they weren't worked out, but he takes lots of risks. Um, he's okay, like kind of fumbling a little bit if the tempo's beyond him. Like it, it, he he's um, he's just a very kind of to me very improvisatory in his approach yeah. to yeah. live performance. Yeah. But when you listen to Bremen Williams, it sounds very worked out. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's just the way I'm, I'm listening to it, but I really think like you, you had mentioned Brett a few times, like I think a lot of this stuff is verbalized. I think they were, they were really um, uh, discussing a lot of this. <laughs> yeah, I think more of it is, I think more of it is than people think. I think uh -huh. that it just takes a lot of work to get these things done. And just like any time there's a concert, everybody's watching these people on stage and just 
sort of taking for granted some of the things that were meticulously worked out, uh, you know, and um, I'm not saying that that's what happened here, but it certainly sounds like a lot of decisions were made. And that's what sort of blows me away about these two is that they're, they're very, these are two very busy people too. I mean, that's what always blows me away about all classical guitarists uh, is, is, that, is that they take the time to do all these things. And I just feel so overwhelmed <laughs> by one solo concert that I can't imagine doing that and being in a duo. I, it just seems so, it's, it's, it's so crazy that they had time to play at that level of mm -hmm. rubato to, to, mm -hmm. to, to sort of maintain that. And at the same time, probably get up in the next week, play, uh, you know, a concerto and a solo recital in a different country and yeah. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's actually, and and in fact, that that point gets addressed um, a lot. I don't I don't know if um, if you or any of our viewers know of this this book by Graham Wade called the the Art of Julian Bream. I do. Wow. Yes. Uh, if you're in any way a, a a Bream fan, I can't recommend this. Like it's, I mean, it's that and 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 a Life on the Road. I I think are a pretty good um, mm -hmm. broad picture, but. One of the things I really like about uh, what you see with the art of Julian Bream is that there's a section, he goes by through decade to decade, um, and uh, he'll split the decade up into performances, editions, and recordings. And so you'll see these, it's illustrated quite beautifully, like, oh, 1972, we're going to start in Wigmore Hall, uh, uh, a concert with John Williams. And then, uh, and that's in like, you know, December 23rd or something like that. And then January 5th, he's in the U.S. on his, you know, 30th tour um, that he's doing solo. And he comes back to, uh, uh, he comes back to the U.K. And then we'll tour again with, say, uh, the Julian Bream consort. And this was commonplace, at least for, for Bream. Now, Williams, not so much. And uh, uh, now hmm. this is where I, I'm really interested because there's a there's a uh, a um, a reference in uh, the uh, a life on the road, uh, which if if you're watching and you're not familiar with it and you're a fan of Julian Bream, I, I, again I can't recommend uh, reading a life on the road enough. It's it's hilarious, yes, um, and and also it just really provides great insights to uh, mm -hmm. Julian Bream the person and Julian Bream the 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 artist. Yeah. Uh, but there's a section in A Life on the Road when Bream is describing um, like a late train. OK. Uh, and Bream and Williams are waiting for the train. Bream's just like perfectly happy to be doing it. It's normal. No big deal. The train's late. Life is fine. I think there's it, there's like a little bit of rain happening, too. And Williams, as as Bream describes it, is just like you know, sort of like hovering like this. It's the worst thing in the world. He's complaining <laughs> about all of it. And I just, I love that. Uh, I, I don't even care if that story is true. Um, uh, I, I, I just think it's, it's such a wonderful illustration. I feel his pain. I feel his pain. I feel pain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what role I'm playing in that regard. For sure. um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That that plays into the whole narrative, though, right? Of sort of Bream, the the tough guy, you know, drinking whiskey in a concert once in a while, and yeah, and yeah. Uh, and then sort of the opposite of that in, in Williams. Yeah. that's what we've all sort of been brought up. I think Williams also one of the things, just you know, in our sort of age group is that I'm 46, so I came to all this stuff in the 90s, and in the 90s, John Williams was still very very active yeah yeah and mm -hmm. julian bream not I, i'll venture to say not as much at that point so That's the right. new albums at tower records that were being presented to me the sexy 18 dollar ones were were the john williams albums you know uh it was just a different time so i got your relationship uh, with the guitarist is also sort of subject to the marketing at that point in your you know development no question yeah I don't know why I'm talking well, about when that, did Williams retire <laughs> just like maybe, t I don't know. Did he retire like 10 years ago or mm -hmm. something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not and, sure yeah. he's officially, officially like, I mean, I know he's like, you know, I, 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 I don't think he's taking bookings in terms of like, you, you wouldn't book him for a guitar festival or something like that, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's a hundred percent. I mean, you were even saying there, you know, Brett, like 
you know, the activity of, of Williams was so much in the 90s. I think it was 2005 or 2006 that he did a prom of the Ironways with like the BBC Orchestra in the Albert Hall in London. And you can see it on YouTube and it's perfect. It's ab- it's ridiculous. Like, you know, it's it's this guy can just play forever, it seems like, you know, and he's kept himself in such good shape and cognitively he's just yeah. so fast. You can see I, the I, you know, I, I, I always heard that um he, he was not a big fan of touring though. Like yeah. great, you know, amazing player, but it would it's rare to see him outside of his outside of his country because he wasn't yeah. a big fan of touring around the world. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, I think what makes it, you know, you bring up a point, too, about how perfect John Williams is. And we've talked often about how imperfect Julian Bream is. Yeah. And how as guitarists, you know, you, you, you feel like one or the other sometimes. And, yeah. it's, and it's sort of, you know, we're, a guitarist watching this stuff. You know, we're all four of us are guitarists. Everybody on here is probably a guitarist in the in the uh, comment section, and we're listening to it as guitarists. So we're sort of we're uh, projecting a lot onto these people, mm. and they're reinforcing our own sort of self image in ways, in some ways, and not. And I would find myself I, I never liked one more than the other. Really, mm. I would constantly kind of go back and forth when I needed them. You know, when I yeah. needed mm. to sort of reconnect with a technically sound performance Mm -hmm. and a beautiful warm tone, I would go to Williams. But when I needed to feel expressive and feel like I demand uh, attention and respect on the stage and sort of, I, it is mine, you know, and I would go to Bream because the two really operated at that, at that level, you know, Bream, he's, he's in, in, in his, in John Williams video, he's playing at, at a castle in Spain. He is, removing himself from his country and from his home. And he's playing in Spain in the brain, you know, a life in the country, that big sort of, uh, that's the one I saw yeah. when I was a kid. He's, he's at home yeah. in his country, you know, at Branchenshire or, or whatever it was called. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's at home. He's making the music come to him. So I think as guitarists, we always have to sort of reconcile uh, being a preservationist with mm. being an artist you know, mm. and being expressive and, and yeah, all these good. all these other things we have to do. And I think that the yeah. two of them really, really are special to us because they are opposites. And then when you get to watch them both play at the same time, it's just insanity, you know? Yeah, and I, I think that um, to go back to Matthew Cochran's point about um, Julian Bream kind of creating the music on the spot, um, almost like, like jazz and your comment about the imperfection, um, but the beauty in the imperfection of like being spontaneous and improvisatory. And even though he's playing classical, you know, like his Julian Bream has this jazz background and it seems like he brings that to his Mm. classical already composed playing. So within the boundary of the music that's already been composed, he improvises his interpretation. Mm. And that's like the Mm -hmm. excitement I think that, that we get from Mm. that. And maybe, you know, like Brett, you're talking about like your, when you're feeling inspired by this and inspired by that, and that all becomes, mm. you know, integrated into you. And so when you feel like, um, like you need to be spontaneous and you need to like be in the moment um, and take risks. Right. So that's like your inspiration, I think. I find, absolutely. Yeah. I love the fact that you said like you, you drew on them at different times for yourself because I, I think I was in sort of like admiration of them and trying to emulate them when I was younger at, at different times. It's similar to what you were saying about like this idea of like freedom or owning the stage and gravitas and personality, the Segovian kind of thing. And then this yeah. Williams, I'm representing the composer and I'm representing the score. Everything's in order. I've made my decisions and now I'm sharing them with you. And I and um, one one thing that... This is, again, maybe a little bit controversial, and I'm not sure this is a fully formed opinion yet, so don't all go nuts. But <laughs> I wonder, though, I wonder if Williams, if, if there was a Bream, right, who was cleaner, then we wouldn't necessarily go down the same route all the time of saying, wow, look, there's a comment just come in, and I love it from Steve. It's like, I love them both, but Bream was my favourite as a poet and as a musical artist. 
And I, I would have said that. Those words would have come out my mouth, definitely, when I was not, and I'm not saying it's a naive comment from Steve at all, but I would have said it when I was younger for whatever reason. I actually find what Williams does harder, harder to achieve both technically and both musically sometimes. Like I think sometimes it's easier to, to throw out, a, if, if, you're a, if you're a person with character and you're a person with personality, then you play up to that. Like presenters play up to that. Speakers play up to that. People who are charismatic, they play to their strengths. Mm -hmm. And I think Williams, Williams, Williams has personality. Like in some of these documentaries, like there's one in the BBC walking around and the place is empty and he's here. It's, it's John W, John W the guitarist. And he's like hilarious. And he's like, he cracks jokes. Like he's, he's, he's actually a really quite funny guy. And, and, and when he's interviewed, he, he comes across as super relaxed and super nice. When he plays, he's, he's, he's such a good musician. I think he's, 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 he's put things into such clear vision in his head and then he's able to actually stick to that. He's not then going, okay, it's not going so well for me right now, but I've got my bag of tricks here. I've got all of my power, all of my energy. Like, you know, I've got all of that charisma, all of that. It's, it's, it's a real talent and it's a skill. It's a wealth I can I can I can draw upon. Whereas Williams goes out and it's it's he's taking care of it so much that he's able to present it. And I mean, in a bit like an Andras Schiff does at the keyboard, you know, as opposed to like a Glenn Gould who would eventually retire from performing because it was wearing him down and he wasn't able to reach that perfectionism that he had in in private when he played for himself. You know, I, I'm 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 astounded by actually Williams. Like the older I get and the more I appreciate how difficult I think what he's doing is, the more I, I find him when when we sort of sometimes accidentally make these comments that Bream's more musical or Bream's more mm -hmm. of a risk taker or Bream's right. more flamboyant and he's more I actually think actually no, not necessarily. I think we have to use our ears and our brains more than we just use our eyes, you know, and we just use like Oh yeah, that titillated me right away. Yeah, that got me. Yeah, Bream did that gesture, that facial expression. I, I understand what that means. It's simple, you know. If I smile at a child, they smile back, you know. But, but, but Williams isn't doing that. Williams is like, I have made a decision about the structure, about the rhythm, about all the sound, and I, I find it. The more I appreciate about the art that we do, the more I come to just fall in love more and more with Williams's interpretations because I find them. I find them beautiful, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm not bashing Bream. I'm not meaning to, but I think like, mm. it, I think sometimes you, you started speaking to it, Brett, like do we use them to reinforce our own feelings about stuff, you know? Like we do that with our idols anyway, you know? Yeah. And it can, it can be both, both at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and that's I, like the subject of your video right here is we're talking about the duo. We're putting them together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's 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 a great comment that's just come in. Not that it backs up exactly what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the ringers off the off the comments here, McAllister. <laughs> um, no, I I think I I think you're dead on. And in fact, I I, I would I. I, I will happily just just uh, uh, defer to all of your comments. I mean, I think I think these are beautiful points. Um, I I love the idea that Bream and Williams are the you know the sort of angel and devil on every single one of our shoulders, and mm -hmm. dependent upon what we need or what we perceive in ourselves, um, what it is that we're. Uh, uh, you know, preparing what it is that we are insecure about. Um, I, I think I think there's such a beauty to that uh, to that idea. I'm 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 gonna now need to go back and kind of listen to uh, uh, their catalog again mm -hmm. with with that in mind. Like, oh, yeah, we we need to talk to our friend. therapists about yeah. <laughs> about our feelings about well, maybe John that's what it is. and maybe, Julie. Maybe and... that's part of part of listening to music. <laughs> is, is, uh, giving ourselves a little bit of ther therapy. Yeah, because when you're listening to them, especially as a young person, um, a college person, a person that's developing technically and and um, artistically, when you listen to these people, you're uh, you kind of you almost play air guitar with them. You almost pretend you're them. You know, we forget that because we're older now and we don't really do. I, I don't listen to music that way, but I used to listen to music and picture myself doing it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me too. yeah. And uh, just being like, man, what if I was yeah. on stage and I was John Williams and I just didn't have to. Everything just 
was easy for me. And we know that that's not true. Yes. We know that it's not true. And that's what uh, Matthew McAllister was saying. That's not true. Yeah. Again, everybody watches these performances and thinks that these things just happen. It's not true that John Williams, everything comes easy to him. He had an tremendous amount of preparation has to occur for that, for that kind of concert to happen. That's not just a gift. That's a, that's an, that's eight hours a day for 20 years leading up to that performance. Yeah. Since he was little. And since he was little and with the Julian Bream again, another, I, I would say that again for him is that I, I'm a person who talks a lot on stage and uh, sometimes people tell me not to. And, <laughs> and I say, I say, you're lucky I'm talking at all. Yeah. Go, it's, it's hard for me to talk. I go, I don't want to talk. I'm just talking because I need to break it up and I want it to be entertaining. And I want you to leave feeling like, you know, me personally, I, you know, that's part of my performance, but that's, you know, these things are all really hard to do. And both of them had to work hard to do it. Bream had to work hard to cultivate that persona. And John Williams had to work really hard to play that flawlessly. So both of them, you know, gave things to the to the stage and to the instrument that are um, undeniably yeah. beautiful. It's not to make too many comparisons with other things that aren't artistic. And, and some people can say that sport is artistic. You know, they watch someone do something and it's very beautiful to them if they're, if they're fans of sport. But... The sort of idea of Nadal, the uh, Rafael Nadal, the Spanish tennis player, and Roger Federer, the Swiss tennis player, they come to my mind a little bit with Williams and Bream. Like Nadal always was sweating. He was always working really hard. His physicality was always there. He was always pushing really hard. And Federer was kind of gliding around, making it look like it was the easiest thing ever. But if you watched his feet, he's a bit like a swan. The top half stays perfect and he's got great posture and everything looks marvelous and his feet are like flying about to get himself in position for the next ball to make it look that elegant and you know it's it is easy I think for us to fall into that trap of of thinking one is therefore maybe I think because we all we all like everyone struggles with the instrument but some people choose not to share it they choose not to show that struggle like you know they, they, they decide that's not for the audience you know like when Brim was recording his albums his solo albums was he making all those faces in the recording studio? Because if he and was he jumping about and bouncing up and down? No, because the engineer would be like, "Could you just sit still?" <laughs> wow, that's a good point. We can hear you rapping about. We can hear your buttons hitting the guitar. We can hear like yeah. the heavy breathing. Or was was Williams a little bit? I was Bream, sorry, a little bit more. I mean, I'm sure he still did some of it, but I'm, I imagine he dialed it down a little bit. You know, um, yeah. we don't know. I know we'd have to yeah. we'd have to we'd have to get one of the engineers on if they're, if they're yeah. still let's work with them both you know that'd but, be yes. fun I'd love to I'd love to hear wow from, I'd love to hear from those guys yeah. well you never know you never know they might come yeah. on they might come on yeah. <laughs> well listen we've 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 held you for um <laughs> oh gosh an hour and fifteen minutes already which it doesn't feel like um uh, yeah. at all to me it feels like we've just been blethering um you know and it's uh thank you so much everybody for 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 contributing it's been just fantastic and all the people commenting mm -hmm. um and, yeah, and thank you. In, in different places and uh i think maybe matt will have to we'll have to figure out another duo who's going to be next good question <laughs> Good question. I'm leaning towards Presti Lagoya. I think that might be a really interesting conversation. That or the Abreus, I think. Yeah. Be, uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Let's hear. It. Let's 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 hear from. Uh, um, yeah. let's hear In from the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Great. <laughs> Hillary and Brett, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank for, you so for, much. Uh, thank you for putting this together. That was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Thank Lots you. This, is, this has been so much fun. Yeah. It has been. Well, great to have you both on. Just a real we, pleasure. Yeah, um, and we look forward to hearing more from you, from you Well, we are, yeah. You. yeah, we should have some stuff um, to share with the world. Um, probably sort of mid-February, Matt's coming over to me this time. So he's coming um, the, across the pond. Um, and we're going to actually, uh, we're going to have a couple of concerts in early February over oh, here. Good. in Spain, And we're going to do really sort of a week of intensive rehearsal because we... we uh, what we may share a little bit, if we share anything with uh, with those two titans of the guitar world, is we're not always in the same place. Not even right, near. You got, you got quite the commute. <laughs> quite the commute. <laughs> so we've got to maximise the time. Yeah. So we're going to have a really intense yeah. week. So we, and we might even come on during that week and sort of discuss that, you know, um, and do a live stream about, 
you know, when we're both in the same place, how we're approaching rehearsal and get into it a little bit more. Because, yeah. I mean, part of why we're looking back at these old, old, that sounds terrible, but these old masters like Bremen Williams and we, we are doing this kind of research is because we are not 21. So we're not coming at this just to form a duo like we've sort of, we've, we've hinted at a little bit in this chat. We want everybody to learn from this. Like I'm sure there'll be a lot of students who are setting up ensembles and things like that. If people are watching these live streams as recordings, that a huge amount of information from both of yourselves, Brett and Hillary. And it's just, it's, it's knowledge and it's experience. And it's, I think it's helpful to share all these things. And it's really helpful for us as we sort of are in the infancy of putting our thing together. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sounds great. On the job training. Yeah, on totally. the job training all the time, right? <laughs> Making it sound like the Amazon of uh, classical guitar. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're work. definitely going to work for you're definitely going to work for free. So that's, that's, that's the Amazon <laughs> one. <laughs> well, listen, thank you all so much. There's lots of comments flapping up on the screen. So many people have been listening. We'll see you all next time for sure. See you next and. Time. We'll Make suggestions on Facebook or on YouTube at Gallery of Guitar or anywhere if you want to sort of see us tackle another topic or someone else next. And Brett and Hillary, we will for sure have you on again oh, in the cool. future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, All everybody. Right. Cheers. See you later. Bye.